Hey, it's King McKay, and we're back with another scene breakdown. For this scene breakdown, we'll be looking at the King of the North scene from episode 10 of season 6. This scene was very emotional and had large implications for season 7s, for both the Lords and characters like Littlefinger, Sansa, and Jon. So we're going to look at them as individuals and as the whole community of the North and see what this will have as an impact on their storyline. So let's get into it. To side with wildling invaders. We didn't invade. We were invited. I really like how this scene starts off with several different issues about how this congregation will exist together as an alliance. Because definitely the Northern people and the people of the Vale have this really demonized, terrible view of the wildlings in their entire lives. They won't just get over that overnight. So it was very nice to see the show address that, move through it so they can move on with the show as they have very strict time constraints. This is very similar to a lot of the things they've done throughout season six, making sure that when season seven comes, they can really dive straight into the story and not have to backpedal on a lot of the stuff that happened in season six. The Boltons are defeated. The war is over. Winter has come. If the Maesters are right, it'll be the coldest one in a thousand years. We should ride home and wait out the coming storms. Again, this is another issue that's always brought up by a lord in these kind of meetings and stuff. Everyone always wants to take their men home, farm the fields and prepare for the winter. And that's something that they can't do when they need the men for the war. And so that was definitely an issue that they had to deal with and they did it here again. It really does show right from the beginning of the scene that a lot of the lords here aren't fully on board with Jon Snow being the leader or the kings and the Starks and everything. They kind of want to remain independent. They're not confirmed in their place just because they won the battle. And so this put Jon Snow in a very tricky spot where he needed to keep their support but he didn't know really how and he tried this next war is not over and i promise you friend the true enemy won't wait out the storm he brings the storm now this line alone actually came across really weak because a lot of the lords here have no experience and just probably don't even believe him at all about the white walkers and the whites and the tainty coming from the wall. They may not know about it yet. They haven't really fully told us that they've explained the entire situation to the Lord yet. So it's going to be pretty hard for him to convince them to keep supporting them, stay the men away, you know, not prepare for the winter and fight instead without some good hard backing or a 10 year old girl that really knows how to play the politics of the North. Your son was butchered at the Red Wedding, Lord Mandley. You swore allegiance to House Stark, Lord Glover, and you. Lord Kerwin, your father was skinned alive by Ramsay Bolton. Still, you refused the call. Now what Lyanna did here was incredibly well done. The Lords of the North and the people of the North are cr incredibly hold their honor extremely high. And if they get out fucking played by a 10 year old girl stood up in front of all the Lordship, no one's laughing, no one's supporting them when they were in the wrong and they really need to gain the favor who's gonna be in charge next. It puts them in an incredibly bad spot, and they need to act fast. This is a reflection of what happened when Great John Umber stood up against Rob Stark when he was getting crowned King of the North. The North remembers. We know no king, but the king in the North whose name is Stark. I don't care if he's a bastard. Ned Stark's blood runs through his veins. He's my king from this day until his last day. So clearly here we see Lyanna's great ability to be able to place herself firmly at John's side. Lifting John up and then putting herself right next to him makes her way more powerful and influential. That's what originally led me to make that crazy theory about Lyanna marrying Jon Snow later on because the way she's conducted herself in this scene. Another really interesting thing from this part was when Lyanna said, I don't care if he's a bastard. Ned Stark's blood runs through his veins. Which isn't actually true. He's got Stark blood, but not Ned Stark's blood. He has Lyanna's blood running through his veins. Which could mean that the reveal of him being R plus Al J, his true heritage of being a Targaryen and Stark, may actually not help him in the hierarchy of getting a higher position with his blood. May actually disadvantage him and lose his position as King of the North. Which could be an interesting way they twist that. My son died for Rob Stark, the young wolf. I didn't think we'd find another king in my lifetime. I didn't commit my men to your cause. Because I didn't want more Mandalays dying for nothing. 
Okay, here again we see the show owning up to these hard questions and realities that would happen in the North. Like, I thought that the show might just gloss over a whole bunch of them and not really cover them in the kind of detail that we needed to know that these people have serious problems and doubts and won't just follow Jon Snow unwittingly. This scene really shows how Jon's power and position given to him as King of the North was more due to the actions of Lyanna and the politics of the North than just him winning that battle. The people here had their different opinions and things that they wanted to do, take their soldiers home, not fight for them, lose more lives, so it's pretty lucky that Lyanna stood up and did what she did, because otherwise they could just disperse and nothing could be made from this game, apart from getting rid of Ramsay. Jon Snow avenged the Red Wedding. He is the White Wolf. The King in the North. This straightaway shows how Jon Snow, in the single move, has managed to gain credit for the battle, revenging the Red Wedding, restoring the North, everything, when there were so many other people, like Sansa and Littlefinger, the Vale Lords, and everyone that helped him reach this achievement. He was pretty reluctant, originally, to even do this in the first place, because he was kind of over things. That's probably one of the main reasons Littlefinger doesn't really buy in like everyone else does. I did not fight beside you on the field, and I will regret that until my dying day. A man can only admit when he was wrong and ask forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive, my lord. There will be more fights to come. House Clover will stand behind House Stark as we have for a thousand years. And I will stand behind Jon Snow. The King in the North! The King in the North! And so they line up like ants giving their respect and honor to Jon Snow. And as you can see, it's not even just the North, Davos, and the Knights of the Vale, everyone in that room has to show their complete loyalty and respect for Jon Snow, giving him the credit for everything, or they can do a little finger and hide in the corner and not show up. Because this was the point where they proved their loyalty or not. And from this single move, he's removed half the power Littlefinger had all the power from the north and gained himself a strong position to be a leader going forward. And of course, there's that famous look between Littlefinger and Sansa. Now when I first watched this, I thought it was just Sansa acting troubled that Littlefinger was displeased with the scenario and he saw something that didn't add to his final goal, meaning he would be a kind of enemy. At second glance, it could be that Sansa was on his side and sees that she should be unhappy as well. These are the kind of two camps that people talk about when they're discussing this issue. And to be entirely honest, I can't really tell you that you're wrong in this one. This will really be discovered and explored more in Season 7. That will be something that happens, this dynamic between Littlefinger John and Sansa, and where Sansa's loyalty lies, who she's going to back, and what she's going to do for her own power and her own position. So tell me in the comment section below, what do you think Sansa will do next season? Do you think she'll back Littlefinger or Jon or part of her own way to be the leader of the North herself and maybe even all of mankind?